I have a rule. What's your rule? We have to shotgun every time we say a certain word. Okay. What, what's the word? Fuck. Dude, my, one of my old bosses was, uh, I was talking a lot of shit to him one day. That was a great pop. Thank you. Great pop. I was talking shit to him one day and we had, we were having beers. And I was like, if I chug this beer faster than you, then I don't have to do like this bitch work thing that I always had to do because mm-hmm. I was an intern. And he looked at me and he's like, all right, dude. And we poured each other like each other's beers. And I started going, and I'm like a fast beer chuck. Like, I'm pretty good at it. Dude, you, like I'm yeah, better. I'm you better do it than, in two seconds. I'm better than like top. I'm in the top like 90, 98th percentile. Yeah. And there's like the people that like just have delete a beer way faster than me too. That yeah. like they just there's just so many levels ahead. But this guy, um, and I we start chugging, and all of a sudden I'm like feeling really good about myself because I'm like I'm gonna fucking crush this old dude that thinks he can party right. And all of a sudden I just hear a. <gasps> And his beer is entirely gone. He beat you. He beat me. He beat you. He beat me. And I go, what the fuck? And he's uh, he's from Sweden. And he moved to Florida. So he's got kind of like a surfer. Yeah. He sounds like Crush from Finding Nemo. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, dude, I was actually like a championship beer chugger back in Sweden. <laughs> so he was and a champion. I would put you up there for probably one of the fastest I've ever <laughs> yeah, seen. But a cha- like, what are the odds? My boss is a championship beer chugger from Sweden. And I challenge him to like a bet. And then I just had to do this one specific bitch work job for the entire time I worked there because I lost. It was just like, he's like, fuck, bro, you lost in the... Every summer I'd go back because I was interning over the summers and be like, you got to keep doing it. It's <laughs> just like, fuck. But oh, what are the cheers. odds? Cheers. Wait, wait, wait. Give me, give me a five-second head start. Okay. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> This is the new you broke it. <laughs> Fucking all <awesome person. laughs> Pretzel. Full of her pretzel, just leave her there. Gently, I won't hurt her. We're gonna have to cut this whole thing out. Yeah, I got to do a guest set for Joe Gatto. That's pretty sick. It was fucking awesome, dude. That's pretty sick. His shows were real fun too. Like dude, the, they the were, people were like always they were there nice. to laugh. They were yeah, there. Yeah. To, you know, when when you have a headliner that that has a a great following, yeah. they're so excited to see the person. Like yeah. versus doing other shows where it's like it's hit or miss because other people come out to laugh for a good time, or they're kind of like, oh, let's go to this comedy show, mm. and. They don't really know what to expect, and they kind of bring a weird energy. Well, they bring a weird energy. There's people that come to a comedy, well, a comedy club, for ex- example, that serves food. That has like a dinner service because they come expecting it to be like a dinner and a show. Mm-hmm. When in reality, it should be show, and you're gonna get food. You might. You, you might. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I might mean. get your yeah, food. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get food. But like Dude, that's it what was, it should be because I remember I would because I, when I used to live in Tampa I used to go to the improv there all the time mm-hmm. and I wouldn't get the food to like halfway through the headliners set. How cool and, is it that you've performed at an improv now? Dude, it, honestly, twice. Yeah, no, it's pretty sick. Twice I mean, because it's like I never thought like I would. So then like fucking if I if nineteen year old me saw that like. That's me what, right now is doing it. He'd be like, "Dude, that's fucking." That's sick. where I'm at with perspective yeah. lately. I've been seeing these uh, TikToks or reels where it's like yeah. somebody be like, "Wow, I wish somebody bought more of my art," and then it's like flashes to the picture of them as a kid, and they're like, "People buy my art." Yeah. And I yeah. saw that, and it kind of woke me up because you know, like I've been going through kind of a low low point recently, and yeah. it's like it's crazy, you know, long ways to go, but to think that people are paying us. At all, yeah. To make people laugh, yeah. And exactly. we get to do things that we enjoy, regardless mm-hmm. of the money that we make on it, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's I mean, and like depending on what show it is, like there's like shows that you make, fucking, depending on if they like if it's like a smaller show, sometimes they'll be like you'll get X amount based on how many people say your name when they walk in, and those you can usually make pretty good money if like your friends are like cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for like other spots, like usually it's like 20 bucks ish, depending yeah. on how much time you do, especially with the amount of time I'm doing right now. But like, even just that, it's like, I'm getting paid four bucks a minute. Like if I like extrapolate that <laughs> to, to like my day job, like I'm making so much money. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I headlined. Yeah, it just keeps going. I like got that. paid 190 to yeah. headline, dude. Dude, 30 minutes. And yeah. It was at like a local show. That was. That's sick. I mean, paying the bills, but. That's it's not paying the bills, but it's also 30 like. 30 minutes. Yeah. That's to, like. To make people laugh. Yeah. And, and that's what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing is like you're like there and you're like, 
the whole the whole night's good time, good vibes. Yeah, no, Joe offered me the guest spot. I just started talking to him. I mean, that's why I like working there. That's why I like hanging out there, even when I'm not working. Is yeah. Just not even for the spots, but f- for the opportunity where you have to read the room. That's what's something that I'm learning is mm. in life is read the room in this situation. I still fail at it regularly. <laughs> I still fail at it regularly where yeah. I'm like, say things or do things that I'm like, look at the situation, Brandon. Yeah, like, just chill. Yeah, just back. chill. But, yeah. but he was so nice. Joe was so nice. Um, so, so cool. I was just asking about his crowd work because I think what a lot of people don't realize about crowd work is... There is some authentic crowd work, but there but there's like framework for a lot of the crowd work that people do. Mm-hmm. Meaning that they've set done those same setups for a lot of you know, often they've done those same mm-hmm. setups but with different answers based on what they're doing. Yeah. And I just saw Samuel uh Samuel J. Conroe uh and he was fantastic. He he yeah. did crowd work where he works crowd work into his bits. So he's doing the same bits, but they but kind of the change and alter. And really, he's asking people the same questions, yeah. and his question is is pretty much the setup, and their answer is the punchline. So that's really what I'm trying to gotcha. to get to. Because he asked like four people, you know, who, who you guys engage? Where'd you do it? And yeah. then he just kept working off of that, and it got funnier and yeah. funnier. One dude had Tourette's because Sam Samuel has dude. Tourette's. I found his I found his muzzle. Yeah, dude, the muzzle thing. Oh my god, a dude had a muzzle in the crowd and for his Tourette's, and he was like, "Don't, don't, don't put, put that, that on." <laughs> He's yeah. like, "What people do?" It was yeah. so funny. Yeah, so it's really inspiring just to be around. So, yeah, be in the room. Yeah, no, it's nice. It's uh, it's, it's always fun. Uh, and then, like I said, just going up against spots, always a good time. Um, I've been getting up lately. I've been kind of in just like the nine to five grind, which mm-hmm. has been a little bit different. But uh, I'm just kind of enjoying the summer right now. I just kind of got a lot of shit going on. Got to hang yeah. out. Um, I'm trying to think. We've got a lot of fun weekend stuff. Um, this weekend I was up at one of my uh, fiance's friend's cabins. Okay. And this is like the first time where like all the boys are kind of like really getting close. Like mm-hmm. all, the, all of like the boyfriends and fiances of mm-hmm. the, the girls' roommates are like starting to get tight. And so like now the girls used to be the fun group. Because the guys just kind of sat back and let the girls hang out. But now it's like the girls are sitting back and letting the guys be like idiots. Yeah. So like every fucking morning, we'd, Dude, we'd all wake up still drunk and yeah. like in the, in like the, just the yard. And we'd be like, okay, which one of us is in trouble today? And it's like, <laughs> we were just like, I don't know. What did you do? And it's like, I don't remember last night. Do you remember last night? Like, no, I don't remember last night. And we'll just be sitting there waiting for the girls to wake up. And one of them come down and you guys like, you guys are all fucked. Like point yeah. out which ones are fucked. And we'd be like, no. And we start Dude, I don't know up. what it is about guys. When we get together, we just become ridiculous. Yeah. And, and it's just like I, That's what I love dumb. about about hanging out with guys. Mm-hmm. We just... We just become morons with one another. Yeah, it's like the stupider the better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous. It's like if someone says something like really stupid, you're just like, that. But it's also like they do it purposely to sound stupid too. Yeah, like they're doing it for the joke. They're not doing it because they're actually dumb. That's like the thing where girls think we're actually dumb. Like the girls, like the guys are fucking idiots. Do you see like them putting mayo on your daughter's back instead of sunscreen? Like no, the joke. Did you do that? No, no, just like just something (laughs) stupid. But the joke would be like, I grab a jar of mayo and pretend I think it's sunscreen, and some one of the other guys like I would have put it on, rub it on my back, right? That would have been funny. Yeah, and they're like, what the fuck? They're just so dumb. But the funny part is, is that it's just you're not actually being dumb. You're just like want to put mayo on your back. Women act like they (laughs) women act like they hate it. They love it. They do. They love that we're so stu- It's what makes us fun. It's what makes us not you, and what you makes you makes us not us. And that's yeah, why yeah, we, yeah. we 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 meant. You know yeah, what I mean? For sure. But yeah, how was your weekend? What did you do? Well, my weekend was good. I had two shows. I uh, hung out with some people. I shows are interesting this summer. They're they're it's it's very sporadic that you get a great show in the summer, mm-hmm. um, especially around here. I mean, if, if there's like a, a place that's warmer year round yeah like you're gonna have good summer shows yeah for i would bet especially like arizona because i feel like their summer is our version of winter where it's just so unbearable outside that that you want to be inside yeah so they're gonna go find something to do Mm -hmm. but when it's here everyone's in the mindset you gotta you gotta make the most of it you gotta make the most of it i like come home every day and just go okay i'm gonna go sit outside yeah dude i've been doing so i got a new job as a tour guide in milwaukee and um i got a new job as a tour guide and it's really fun. It's a food tour, so we walk around and we do a heritage, you know, the the history of of Milwaukee. And I, I had to learn a bunch for it. But I had this this small group of, of four people, two old couples, elderly, retired people, and they they came in sweet as could be. You know, can't say that anymore, dude. What? The R word. 
Retired. Dude. Am I canceled? Dang, dude. <laughs> You're going to have to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I've been doing I've been doing these tours, uh, Milwaukee food tours, and uh, these two old couples came in together. They knew each other. They came in together. And Physically it, old. Yes, retired people. Oh my god! And um, and one of them halfway through it, she tells me, "Yeah, sorry, it's been so like we we take so long to walk because we have to walk around stop at all these food places. Uh-huh. And of course, traditional food, sausage, cheese, yeah, yeah. Uh, fish fry, all the yeah. all the Milwaukee staples. And um, every twenty five feet, he's like, I gotta stop and sit down. One of the other guys, <laughs> she goes, Yeah, sorry, two weeks ago he just had a triple bypass heart surgery. <laughs> I was like, I was like, ma'am, what? you know, his wife was like, we're going on a food tour. It's yeah. like, what? why was it a good idea to be like, we're going to go walk around and exercise while we stuff ourselves with cheese and sausage <laughs> and try not to die. Fried, I was, fried fish just yeah. down the gullet. Dude, I was like, please don't die on yeah. this tour. I'm not joking. He would just sit on the sidewalk. No. Like, I just need five minutes real quick. And Wait, I'm like, really? I'm in no hurry. Like, please don't. Like, there was nobody else in the tour, so yeah. it was fine. I was like, just Wait, don't Wait, were the two couples? They yes. were friends? Yes. So they all knew each other. Yes. So it wasn't like one old couple that was like, go get it. No, and then no. the other one was like... No, the other two were like, he might die. Just go wait. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I'm just like, why? The last thing I want to do after heart surgery is like, let's go shove myself with sausage, cheese, and some <laughs> fried fish, and then just go walk around a city. No, no. Dude, old people are so strange because they're... So ready to die, mm-hmm. but they complain about being close to death the whole time. You know what I mean? They're just yeah. like, I can't feel my feet. How do you think you're going to mentally prepare for that? Because obviously, like, we either die young or middle aged, whatever. And, I'm ready to die. And yeah, but I'm saying like, once you're once you hit maybe seventy, right? Yeah. The average lifespan for females, I think, is seventy six, and for males in America, is seventy four. Yeah. Off of the top of my head, how do you mentally like once you hit seventy, you have to be like. I could die at any moment. Like, yeah. I could fall yeah. on a sausage tour. You fall so often. When, and, when and you die. hit a certain age, you just start falling. I'm trying to write a bit about it. I can't get it. Yeah. No, that's a funny bit, dude. I'm trying to get it better. But it's, yeah. it's like, dude, they'll just walk. The house They're, becomes booby trapped. Yeah, the, the house is booby trapped. <laughs> yeah, they just like, just you're just walking through the kitchen. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, grandma fell again. You're like, oh, what's she doing? Just walking. She was just walking. It's like, how the heck? I almost said the F word. She was just walking and uh It's my neighbors. They're getting evicted, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're fine. They're you know, they haven't bugged me, but They bug each other and the landlord? They bug each other and the landlord. I don't wanna get into that. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about it on yeah. here. Um But yeah, you get old and you just start falling apart. It's just so ridiculous. Like and I'm trying to figure out the Vel- Velcro shoes thing. But, like, watch That's because you could die tying your w- shoes. Watch that's a punch you. right there, dude. <laughs> dude, the only people who wear Velcro shoes are kindergartens, and that's because they don't know how to. They don't know how to. And then you get 70, and you're like, well, I don't want to die bending over. You're bending over. You're just <laughs> face plant. Dude, that's a punch yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. That's a punch for your joke. Yeah, dude. But <laughs> that was, like, the, the only time I want to, be, like, have Velcro shoes is when I'm pretending like I don't know how to tie my shoes as a kid because I want the light up ones. Like shit like that. Because nothing's more defeating than seeing like like my grandfather who is like one of the best men I've ever known. Yeah. Fucking his shoes off. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like okay. Yeah. You just can't do it. No. It's defeating. Yeah. My uncle my uncle wears them too but he I think Nike them. Nike should make Velcro kicks for young kids. Because that would be hilarious. It'd be, almost be ironically cool. Like oh, cool, they definitely cool would. Velcro kicks. I'm sure they slap Velcro on things. Not, I mean, basketball shoes, you have a Velcro over the top, but you have to tie them. So bring back to quote, how would you mentally prepare? How would you mentally prepare to be ready to die? It's, I'm, and I'm trying to think of this right now. I think I would just, I would just try to always do fun stuff. That's what I'm trying to do now. That's why I'm, uh, and that's why we're pursuing this, right? We, d- we don't yeah. want to get to the point where we're 70 and we're like, I was uh, in a cubicle for my entire life. Yeah, well, the best part about it is like, at least like I tried it. 
at least I went and did it and been like, okay, I know if this is something that I want to do or if it's something that's not for exactly. me. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. Because I've been, like, dipping my toes in lots of waters. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is, like, one of the longest I've gone with one. Uh, but this is what I always wanted to do. But I think just always trying new stuff. Like, I've been thinking about maybe, like, learning guitar, trying to learn a new language. But I have so much stuff going on already where it's kind of going to be hard to kind of juggle that. But maybe after um, the wedding, it'll be a lot more... Oh. <laughs> sure, <laughs> dude. I, I don't well, know. Do. If I've learned anything about any of my friends who've gotten married, their schedule doesn't get lighter once they get married. Dude, my schedule is pretty damn light for being in like a very serious relationship. For sure. For the most part, like I'll go. To, when I was going to open mics frequently during during the winter, I would go all the time. I just wouldn't go and smoke weed or like get hammered yeah. afterwards. You yeah. know, it'd be like it's it's midnight. I have to go home. I'd go home, get up, go to work, go do it again. Yeah. Like my fiance did not see me. For the most part, until Sunday. And Sunday, that was my day was packed with stuff with her. Yeah. But for the most part, it was like her trying to do stuff that I like too. So we were always like having a good vibe. Uh, so Yeah. I, I, well, the reason I also thought of this is because the reason, it's, it's mainly the reason I quit my job back when I, I worked in tech sales in Minneapolis. Yeah. Well, I mean, like there was like one defining moment that was like, I need to pursue what I want to pursue in life. Yeah. And I've wanted to be a comic since I was eight years old. Yeah. And it was, we, we, were, we were outside, so we had the only building with like a huge lawn, and it was really, it was a cool place for work for the most part. Yeah. Uh, they didn't pay well, but um, we were outside, and, and we're having a happy hour on the lawn and during yeah. the summer, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, we see ambulances over there. And we don't know what happened until the next day. Yeah. And the next day, coincidentally, yeah. we also had a sales meeting. A huge company, probably four or 500 people in mm -hmm. sales, you know. And um, apparently we found out that one of the guys who worked in sales, you know, he was overweight, didn't take care of himself. He was leaving the parking garage on his motorcycle. Ironic that a big guy was riding it, but nonetheless, go for it, live your life. He pulled out and collapsed and had a heart attack and died. Yeah. And he, I just pictured like, what if my last last event? What, what if my last visualization before I died was collapsing and watching Chad from Sales shotgun a white claw, yeah. you know, right before yeah. I die. And, and I was like, I, I can't do this. And the part that really nailed the hammer in for me was, or nailed, hit the nail, hit the nail on that. Oh, wow. yeah, shotgun one. Um, was was we went to the meeting afterwards, and the, the what they did to commemorate this guy was they had a big PowerPoint about how sales are doing, where we're going, where like how's everything. Yeah. And then they just went. And anyways, we need to talk about this. Clicked it. It was just a picture of him, and the guy, and the leader of our organization just goes, "Times like these really remind you about what's important in life." And then he went to the next slide. <laughs> Sales, Sales. <laughs> metrics. <Yeah. laughs> and I was Look like, at all these graphs. I was like, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't even say what mattered. You just were like, <laughs> "What? What mattered?" So I was. It was. It was just such a realization of like. These companies, they give you a job, they do what they're supposed to do, but when you got the time to go after something, go yeah. after something. You yeah, know? absolutely. I mean, I'm working my day job because I need, obviously need the money. You well, that's survive. why I just got, you got the other one. Yeah, you got to survive. But uh, I was just like thinking, because I was sitting at my cube today, and uh, my boss is on vacation, and then, I, so I'm just kind of sitting there by myself, there, like doing my typical stuff, but... I don't have, like, my boss around for just, like, his meetings that I go with or just things like that. And uh, I was just sitting there going, like, okay, well, if I, when I don't have a boss, like, what's the next move? Do I just, like, sit in this cube and wait till I retire? You know what I mean? Like, is this just how it's going to be? Yeah. Because it, it's not like the cubes are nice. You know what I mean? They're just, like, random cubes. They're, like, brown. I go here every day and I go sit there for eight hours a day in this brown room and then just like stare at a computer and yeah. wait for the day to be over. I do that every day. It's going to be tough, man. Yeah. But, but you realize that it's that you have other things to go for. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't get how people that I know go to work so mm -hmm. that they can just go home and don't have like a plan of like where they want to be in life. You know, like yeah. don't have like, like the goal isn't to be like, get there, but the goal is to like, just discover what, what you really want to do, like what what you really 
want to spend your time doing because like then they, they they get so drained from nine to five and then once they're done they're like like I commend you for like yeah. doing all of this stuff and I'm starting yeah. mine but I'm gonna but now that I've had this this discipline to continue with comedy because I do the job it's not gonna alter that you know what I mean correct like, it's yeah, but yeah. but before that it was like I was working just to leave at four thirty five and then go home and. And, and play video games or like just yeah. get away from it and then wake up and I was just Do it all again. You just, keep, you just keep doing the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's the tough one because you want to, you just want to keep doing fun stuff. I, all in on, just like having, like as soon as I get done doing my things I need to do, as soon as that's over, I'm like getting jazzed up, like crack yeah. open a beer, go do something with my fiance, go find something to do with my friends. Like every weekend this summer has been, I've, always had something going on and it's like I, I want to make sure I'm yeah like doing fun stuff as opposed to being like okay I need to relax now mm -hmm. like, I need to relax this whole weekend because work drains me you just can't do that because then you're not going to do anything and yeah. then you're just going to be stuck so yeah just keep doing doing all that like fun stuff doing as like much as you can and dipping your toes into the water like figuring out what you're actually going to like because you know I mean, as much as we like doing this right now there could be the very well like very good possibility that there's like something else that comes up that you just yeah. like figured out and you're like well, that's this is what I want to do so that's really all that's the whole thing for sure